Welcome to the Fit Small Business QuickBooks Online Training Course. In this lesson, we're going to cover how to handle bounce checks from customers in QuickBooks Online. To follow along with me, log into your QuickBooks Online account now or click the link below for a free 30-day trial of QuickBooks Online. You can also click this link to access our full QuickBooks Online course and other helpful resources. Let's get started. When you deposit a check that you received from a customer and there are not enough funds in their bank account, the check is returned to your bank due to non-sufficient funds to pay the check. Sometimes it can be a real hassle because you are penalized by your bank who will charge you a fee for the bounced check. In addition, you've got to contact your customer and either have them write you another check or provide another form of payment. In this lesson, we will walk through how to correctly handle bounced checks. When a customer's check bounces, it impacts several things. Your bank account is reduced by the amount of the check. Your accounts receivable will increase since the customer's payment did not go through and the bank charges you a fee for the non-sufficient funds. In an effort to avoid these fees and ensure that your financial statements are accurate, we will walk through step-by-step -step in this lesson to show you how to record a transaction in QuickBooks for each of these. From the home page, click on the plus sign and go ahead and select check right below the vendor's column. The right check window will display. And in this screen, we will go ahead and enter the information for the customer that bounced the check. In this first field from the drop down, you want to go ahead and select the customer. In the next field, you want to go ahead and select the bank account where the bank where the check bounced. For the payment date, we want to go ahead and enter the date the check was returned. In the account field, we want to go ahead and select the accounts receivable account. In the description field, we'll go ahead and enter the bounce check information. So bounce check and then the check number will suffice here. And then we'll go ahead and enter the amount of the bounce check. Do not include the NSF fee charged by the bank here. We will enter that in the next step. In the check number field, go ahead and put NSF. So remove the check mark for print later and type NSF in the check number field. Once you have completed all of the fields, we'll go ahead and save and close this. Last but not least, if you want to add some additional information in this memo field, you can do that. Next thing we want to do is record the NSF fee that the bank is going to charge you. From the home page, go ahead and click on the plus sign at the top. Below the vendors column, we want to select expense. The expense window will display and we'll go ahead and complete these fields. So in this first field, the payee will be the bank that is charging the fee. In the next field, we want to go ahead and select again the bank account where the check bounced. And the payment date will be the date that the check was returned. In the reference number field over to the right, go ahead and enter bank NSF fee. In the account field, you want to select an account that is called bank fees. If you don't have a bank charges or a bank fees account, you can set one up in this screen by going ahead and scrolling up to the top and clicking on add account or add new. In the description, you'll go ahead and enter NSF fee and then enter the amount that the bank charges you here. Once all of the fields are completed, we'll go ahead and save and close this. And then the final step that we want to do is we want to go ahead and bill the customer for the NSF fee. Now note that this step is optional. However, I recommend that you bill your customer for the NSF fee that you were charged by the bank. Some businesses may charge a little bit more for the inconvenience, but that's totally up to you. To bill the customer for the NSF fee from the homepage, we'll go ahead and click on the plus sign at the top. And below the customer's column, go ahead and select invoice and the create invoice window will display and we'll go ahead and complete these fields to build our customer. So we're gonna build our customer, Bridget O'Brien. And I'd recommend that the terms are due upon receipt. You don't wanna give additional terms for something like this. 
For products and services, you want to set up an item on your items list called Customer NSF Fee. So from the drop down, you can do this by clicking on the Add New option here and setting up Customer NSF Fee. In the description, you want to be sure that you provide a description so the customer is aware of what you are charging them. So something like fee charge for return check number uh, will be sufficient here. And then as far as the amount, at a minimum, as I said earlier, you can charge what the bank charged you or you can charge a little bit more. It's, it's definitely your call on this. Um, I would also, in the message box in the lower left-hand corner, put a descriptive a message here that lets the customer know they need to provide you with a replacement check and they also need to remit payment for this NSF fee. Once you have completed all the fields, we can go ahead and save and close this invoice. To gain a better understanding of how recording bounce checks impacts your accounts and your financial statements, click this link to walk through the step-by-step -step written lesson. That wraps up the lesson on how to handle bounce checks from customers in QuickBooks Online. To access our full QuickBooks Online course or any of the other lessons in this series, click this link. You can also find a link below this video for a free 30-day trial of QuickBooks Online. If you have feedback about this course or if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe.